So if you're coming here from mainstream media land and you haven't been with this channel before, just hang around and I think eventually you'll be able to appreciate how we do things here, okay? And for some of my regular listeners, I'm sure they're eager for the pre-COVID subjects I was covering, okay? And we'll get there indeed, but since COVID has been used as a license for almost everything, I feel a few things do deserve wider distribution, so I'm trying to play that part. Now, I pray you can understand the implications I'm trying to outline here because it'll bear relevance going forward. But what we're looking at is a snapshot from the CDC website, and links are below. So right here it asks, should COVID-19 be reported on the death certificate only with a confirmed test? And in response it says, COVID-19 should, should be reported on the death certificate for all decedents where the disease caused or is assumed to have caused or contributed to death. That means if you were killed of an alternate illness, meaning not COVID, yet tested positive for COVID, they can include that into the count. Now that's actually confirmed by the Illinois Department of Public Health director right here. The director of public health took time today to explain how the department rules someone in actual COVID death. It can be a little confusing. She says anyone who has COVID when they pass away will be included in that category. Dr. Ngazi Azike explained this does not mean the virus caused that death, but if someone does test positive for COVID before dying, that is classified a coronavirus fatality. You were in hospice and had already been given, you know, a few weeks to live and then you also were found to have COVID, that would be counted as a COVID death. It means that if, um, it technically, if even if you died of a clear alternate cause, but you had COVID at the same time, it's still listed as a COVID death. So um, everyone who's listed as a COVID death doesn't mean that that was the cause of the death, but they had COVID at the time of death. And maybe you heard that already, maybe you hadn't, but you can imagine how this helps to put things into perspective. And in case you didn't catch it, what she just said is that somebody who passes away after testing positive for the virus is included in the COVID death count, even if COVID wasn't the cause. It's absolutely incredible. Now, the World Health Organization explains that even where a laboratory confirmation is inconclusive or unavailable, that information may still be used as the cause of death or a clinical diagnosis. So in a nutshell, that means the numbers are incredibly inaccurate not just on a national level, but internationally too, because these are ICDs we're talking about, international classifications of disease. So I guess we're just supposed to hunker down and pin up until the medical messiah arrives. And I mean, we do have a vaccine for the flu, but it still kills thousands of people worldwide every year. And who'd be surprised if they allow this narrative to keep its course until flu season and call that the second wave? Because according to Dr. Fauci, the same doctor that's been on the task force, he said 2020 was poised to be one of the worst flu years since 2017 and 2018, which purportedly were two of the worst years for flu and pneumonia in decades. If that's the case, if 2020 was supposed to look like 2017 and 18, how are some places reporting no new flu deaths for a second week in a row? I think because it touches back to what I covered in my last few videos. Not only does the ICD coding practices on COVID lend itself to error, but so do the tests themselves, okay? Remember the, the list of countries that were calling foul on the testing kits? And here's the thing, an overwhelming majority of people that come down with severe COVID symptoms are those with underlying conditions or they're immunocompromised, okay, almost 90% or more. And over 90% of people who come down with the illness recover. So if only a particular demographic are the ones really affected, our response should be proportionate to that and indeed prioritize their safety in a balanced way. But in an overexertion, the wider population was harmed in all the now growing ways. Jobs, uh, freedoms, the world economy, international food shortages. Not only was there obvious misdirection behind the COVID outbreak that led us here, it also served as an assessment, okay? A test. And these tests, they aren't always the kind that are strictly pass or fail. They're often meant to assess our actions, what we do, what we don't do, what we allow, what we don't allow. And yes, no doubt sometimes testing the overall efficiency of a contagion, right? Bird flu, swine flu, Ebola, Zika, uh, the measles. <laughs> uh, the observations are made, the data is collected from the specimens, and the next endeavor goes underway. The real contagion, however, is the fear contagion. And it's the very same which spawns this fright-induced sickness that takes captive reason and it clouds judgment. 
And it's that clouded judgment which allows the host of policies, uh, reforms, laws, and on like that to be adopted. And that's whether a particular scenario is intentional, instigated, or organic. No good crisis goes to waste. So it's our job to expose or overturn what we can, how we can.